Good morning, folks. It's a good time of the year to head out and see some fireballs. We have three annual events collected together now. North Torrids, South Torrids, and the Leonid Meteor Shower are all currently playing a role. National Geographic hit a home run here, showing every coastline in the world under the hypothetical total ice melt. They've hit every continent, and some of the images are astounding. I won't ruin all their fun. The link is posted below. You should follow it. But I will hop quickly to their final frame as it's a nice education bit about where Earth's water can be found. Mostly in the oceans, obviously. Second greatest source is the ice, followed by groundwater, lakes, atmosphere, swamps, and in living beings. The Grail mission showing off as well as it measures the crustal thickness at different points of the moon. Some of the places appear to have a very thin layer, and we are getting closer to the controversy over actual size and depth of some of the so-called impact craters. Coming back to Earth where the top watch is the Philippines, Super Typhoon Haiyan, now weaker but the damage is done. 200 mile per hour gusts and only slightly lower sustained winds at the eastern part of the island made some parts of the storm quote, not survivable. We are waiting the incoming damage and death reports. Comparisons to Typhoon Tip are being made. Solar wind is calming, the speed is indeed rising, but the more important density is on a decline. Geomagnetic instability is waning as well, looking at the KP index, with the electron flux attempting to recover as well. NASA, Goddard, Scientific Visualization Studio, taking on the start of the current solar uptick, which is now almost two weeks old, matching the longest uptick since this solar maximum began to disappoint us. Took another X flare this morning, just an X1, still not major for the max of a cycle. This end little spiral is for the previous M flare, but all 1890s pops do about the same thing, so potential minor CMEs could be coming, more of them, but definitely not major. In analysis this morning, we caught a flare in progress, decided to pull the D region absorption prediction along with it to show the radio blackout feature of solar flares. Now where radiation storms affect the poles, CMEs affect the global magnetic field. Flares ionize the atmosphere directly on the noon position beneath the sun at that time. You see the ionization is very responsive as the X-ray radiation travels at light speed, much faster than CMEs. Interestingly, while CMEs and radiation storms can last days, the atmospheric ionization declines rapidly as soon as the flare event is over. Looking at the sunspots, I've got to expect some more flaring as both the Earth-facing groups have delta spots. Positive and negative umbras within the same penumbral region. The leading group continues to be complex. The decay is now matched at the backside by fortification of a southern positive blue umbra. Also keep your peripherals on the new incomer. The quakes are still not back since the magnetic tantrum thrown up here, but we are calming and the southern opening will face us in two days power of the solar wind coming from those openings should also be monitored. I've now made it easier to find the info citations, sources, and the background information right below this video under the About tab. Today's links are now on top with the ISON links always up top for now and the remaining links of the day below that. Under those, we have the background videos, which I can tell are underutilized as about 90% of the questions I see here are answered in those videos. Website links are going below. Shots of our star to close. Eyes open. No fear. It's 6.40 a.m. Eastern Time and that's the news. Be safe, everyone.